Ladies and gentlemen, forest fires are currently the hot topic in Canada. No pun intended. And it's not just because someone tried to deep fry poutine in the woods. It's raining fire and ash from coast to coast as the Great White North turns into a smoldering shade of charcoal. But why? Let's explore. Mother Nature decided that this year's summer fashion is extra crispy and it came early. The forests are dry and lightning seems to have developed a rather fiery relationship with the ground. Making matters worse, a change in the jet stream seems to be making wildfires potentially the new Canadian norm. It's not just the trees that are crackling, conspiracy theories are popping like popcorn. Maxime Bernier is casting shade on green terrorists who he thinks are moonlighting as fire starters. Meanwhile, in Alberta, some say the fires are actually a plot to keep conservatives away from voting booths. Is there any truth to these theories? Well, perhaps, if you're a member of the woke right. But if you're one of the rest of us, let's dive in to what's actually happening. The 2023 wildfire season in the Great White North has been off to a raging start, with over 400 fires burning at one time from the east to the west coast. Stephen Gilbo, Canada's Minister of Environment, said this is one of the worst wildfire seasons on record. More than 9.2 million acres have been burned to a crisp so far. Now, let's talk stats. Of these fires, 233 of them were totally out of control, while 114 were considered under control. Let's take a look at the provinces going east to west. In Nova Scotia, there was an international firefighting extravaganza going on with firefighters from three provinces of the U.S. and Canada's Department of National Defense wrestling with the largest wildfire in the province's history near Barrington Lake, which destroyed 150 structures, of which at least 60 were homes. Quebec started the season off with a jaw-dropping 149 active fires, of which about half were caused by lightning. And not to be outdone, the other half were started by humans. This caused the smoke to travel down to Toronto and New York City. Ontario isn't faring that well either. The province reported 276 forest fires this year so far, burning through about 110,000 hectares. In comparison, during the same period last year, there were 87 fires that consumed 2,300 hectares, so Ontario has seen nearly a 50x increase in hectares burnt down. And then in Alberta, we have been hopping from one extreme to the next. Several weeks ago, there were about 79 wildfires raging across the province at one time, leading to mass evacuations and state of emergency declarations. However, a sudden turn of weather events and those same regions are now facing a different kind of warning. Residents of Edson and Yellowhead County are grappling with flooding and evacuation orders mere days after similar orders due to wildfires were lifted. The very heavy rains that helped combat the wildfires have now led to a fresh crisis of flooding. Unusually early in the wildfire season, the country is on track for its most destructive season in history, largely due to climate change induced extreme temperatures and drought conditions. Warm, dry conditions coupled with recent record heat and droughts have created a combustible environment for wildfires. The current wildfires are particularly rampant in the drought-stricken Canadian prairies of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. According to the Canadian Drought Monitor, all provinces are experiencing abnormal dryness or moderate to severe droughts. Making matters worse, though, is the broad weakening of the jet stream, which is exasperating the fires. The jet stream, which depends on temperature differences between the Arctic and the South, is weaker due to accelerated warming in the Arctic, causing hot, dry weather systems to stall and leading to heat domes that are ripe for fires. Half of Canada's wildfires in a typical season are caused by lightning, which increases with hot, dry weather and accounts for over 85% of wildfire destruction. The rest are human-caused. Even slight increases in average temperatures have significant implications, with a 1 degree Celsius rise resulting in around 12% more lightning, thereby increasing the potential for fires. In fact, the Canadian Wildland Fire Information System notes that the current wildfire destruction is 13 times worse than the 10-year average for this point in the season. Aside from the wildfire season getting off to an early start this year, why is 2023 the year for Canada's wildfires to be in the spotlight? Well, this year's fire season is unique because the fires aren't subject to just one region or province. As we mentioned before, what's linking all the fires across Canada are unseasonably hot temperatures for the time of year, coupled with prolonged drought and increased human enroachment in forested areas. Canadians in the West Coast see this kind of wildfire action every year. First time? Yeah, you? <laughs> no, no, not my first time. 
but it wasn't until New York City started feeling the heat that Canada made its way to front page headlines. Once Canadian smoke started wafting its way through the south, it caused the city to issue an air quality statement that urged schools to cancel outdoor activities. Meanwhile, Calgary, with air quality worse than New York City, was like, where is our media frenzy? With social media users even attesting the apocalyptic Calgary skies to HBO's The Last of Us, which was filmed in the province. And now politicians are sparing no time sprinting to the cameras faster than Usain Bolt. Now, let's dive into the all-you-can-eat buffet of conspiracy theories and misinformation that have spread like, well, wildfires. First on the plate, we have Maxime Bernier, a former foreign minister and current pilot of the Conspiracy Express, speculating that wildfires are just the brainchild of green terrorists. Just imagine eco-friendly anarchists creeping through the forest with soy-based gluten-free fire starters. And some people online are theorizing that the wildfires are a NDP plot to disrupt the conservative stronghold in the Alberta provincial election. Social media posts claimed that the wildfires were started in conservative ridings to prevent conservative voters from casting their votes in the May 29th election and politically benefit the NDP. The evidence? Old articles about arsonists. However, these articles were published before 2023 and referred to the previous year's crimes. But wait, of course, there's more. We got the 15-minute city conspiracists out there where many people think that the government wants everyone living in extremely close, dense, tiny communities which has sparked some social media posts suggesting that wildfire evacuees are another example of the government elites moving towards restricting our general freedoms. And of course, we got the gun lovers out there uh, claiming that the wildfires are a ruse for the RCMP to snatch up guns. Some social media users are claiming that the fires were started intentionally in order to give the RCMP a reason to seize guns from Albertans because that's allegedly what happened in 2013 during an unprecedented flood season. All right, so we just went through some of the insane conspiracy theories out there, but let's touch base on some of the uncomfortable truths. Let's talk about controlled burns and selective logging. In other words, we're going to save the forest by torching it. Um, it's said that there are three elements influencing wildfires, oxygen, heat, and fuel. Where oxygen is air, heat is lightning or man-made fire, and fuel is wood, brush, or lichen. The only manageable element of the three is fuel. Forest management tools like logging, thinning, and controlled burns are proven methods to reduce this fuel, making fires on managed forest land easier to extinguish. In fact, in a bygone era, Canadian forests had their very own traditional indigenous fire management system, which kept underbrush out with planned burns to safeguard forests and people. In the 1970s, forestry managers recognized the ecological benefits of wildfires and that fire suppression was not always necessary or desirable. But Canadian forestry policies have reverted away from those traditional practices with the government perceiving Indigenous fire management techniques as inferior, and activists have started pushing for increased protection of rare habitats in culturally significant areas. So let's wrap it up. Now look, I'm on YouTube and it's going to be a lot better for the algorithm if I throw a bunch of fear at you guys involving conspiracies rather than rational thoughts. Perhaps I should have made this whole video about how Sasquatch was the one who started the wildfires. That damn Sasquatch. Times, they're changing. Now, let me get personal for a second. This is the first year that I felt like a character in a dystopian movie where the sky was a constant shade of post-apocalyptic haze. And honestly, it felt like the sun took a three-week vacation in June. It was depressing. I like sun and I like blue skies. It appears that this may be a trend, something we got to get used to living with. The climate is moving in a direction where extreme weather is going to be more common and common. How much of an impact can we as people have on climate change? I don't know. The conversation is complicated, and it usually involves someone poking fun at Greta Thunberg and complaining that people can't actually make a difference. Coal use is up 300% in India and 200% in China over the last 20 years, and Philip Morris is about to become an ESG stock. Not to mention, none of the global leaders who like talking about climate action are interested in giving up their private jets. We haw, we hum, and we seem to never make any real impactful change. Yeah, you've got to help us, Doc. We've tried nothing and we're all out of ideas. If you're looking for easy answers, you won't find them from a YouTuber who likes ranting about penny stocks. But let's focus on the topic at hand. 
Maybe a simple solution is putting pressure on and voting for politicians that are ready to get serious about control methods for wildfires. We can't stop them, but maybe we can reduce the spread. All right, guys, let me know what you think in the comments section. Do you think that we can control these wildfires? Have the wildfires impacted your life? What do you think we could be doing differently? All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you could do me a big favor, please smash that like button, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I love you all. So guys, we just recently launched this channel and we noticed that 99.9% .9 of our viewers are not subscribed. So if you enjoyed this video, we need your help in growing this channel. By subscribing, that would help us keep the lights on and make sure that our crews have jobs in these uncertain times. So please hit that subscribe button and we promise to make more quality videos that I'm sure you're gonna love.